Rush, one of the most idiosyncratic bands to emerge from the wave of hard rock in the early 1970s. A trio of musical polymaths who cut a fiercely independent, sometimes controversial path through various styles of music to forge a distinctive, evolving sound that was incomparable to any of the acts around them. Over a 40-year career, their concepts and experiments have pushed the accepted frontiers of hard rock, opening new territory and influencing legions of bands that followed in their wake. They're a monster three-piece band with extraordinary musicianship, and all of them move right across from playing sort of straight grooves to very complex rhythms. The difficult, progressive, crazy grandfather scientists of metal uh, previous that provide all these building blocks to musicians who, you know, or, or kids who want to become good musicians. They're, they're almost like the, uh, you, you know, the, the wise elders of, of hard rock. Coming from the music industry hinterlands in Canada, Rush developed firmly outside of the mainstream. Defiantly uncommercial and routinely dismissed by the music press, Rush spent the 70s on a radical journey through hard rock, progressive rock and heavy metal to establish themselves as one of the world's biggest bands. This film traces those years and the work that carried the group from the bars of Toronto to the arenas of the United States. It was six years from 74 to 1980 and they start off as a hybrid of Yes and Led Zeppelin and they end it as one of the most cultured and sophisticated heavy rock bands with a very stylish sound that mixes, uh, that, that has a pretty much perfect mix of heavy metal and progressive rock. Rush started life in 1968 when school friends Geddy Lee and Alex Lifeson teamed up with neighborhood drummer John Rutsey to form a band in their hometown of Toronto, Canada. The trio had played both separately and together in a number of local bands and after-school jam sessions over the previous couple of years. And by the time they came together for their first gig as Rush, it was with a settled ambition to make a serious go of a career in music. For young aspirants in Toronto, however, Finding any opportunities in what was a musical backwater represented a daunting task. You have to remember that in back in 1968, 1969, there really wasn't much of a Canadian music scene. Canada was more or less a branch plant, a, a far-flung province of the United States. We didn't have an indigenous music industry. Now, we had some bands, and we did have some places for these bands to play, but they, were t they tended to be uh, ignored in favor of international acts, acts from the UK, acts from the US. Uh, so it was a bit of an uphill struggle for, for a lot of these bands uh, if the ones that wanted to stay home were the ones that were starting out. Um, other artists such as uh, Paul Anka, Neil Young and Joni Mitchell and guess who, they had bailed for the United States, which is the, the land of plenty. But uh, for a band that was starting up in 68, 69, it was a bit tough. And you played a lot of high schools and you played a lot of um, small bars for people that really didn't care. The Toronto music scene, uh, it was still pretty quiet at that point in 1968-69. Um, one of the things that it had going for it was its own little kind of uh, Haight-Ashbury situation. It had a place called Yorkville. There was a real sort of coffee house scene, uh, singer-songwriters. But there was quite a, you know, hippie psychedelia scene starting to pick up. Um, obviously, there was no such thing as progressive rock or heavy metal or anything at that point. 